What's happening everybody? Trey here joined by my dad Sean and today reactions to the classics. It is time for another song battle and it is time for another Bob Dylan song yes. battle. We got a few of these up and I want to shout out our longtime uh, friend of the channel patron and a uh, massive Dylan fan himself. Sean, uh, as always Sean, appreciate it. Definitely. Uh, we reviewed multiple records for Sean uh, as well that, uh, you know, covering um, uh, some more obscure Dylan records. Yep. Uh, besides the Beatles, I think we have more Dylan stuff up than anything on the channel. So be sure to check uh, what we got up after this battle, man. But we're taking it MTV Unplugged, Dad. It's going to be John Brown against Dignity. And so uh, I'm looking forward to this. I haven't heard anything from Dylan's Unplugged. I didn't even know he did one. Yeah, I hadn't, hadn't heard anything from it either. Sean says both never... The other Sean, not this Sean. <laughs> says both never made it to an official studio album. Both are from the MTV Unplugged album released in May of 95 by Columbia Records. It was also reissued in 2007 by Sony, mm. so if you have that version and wonder what the heck's going on. It documents Dylan's appearance on the then highly popular MTV Unplugged television series. It was recorded at Sony Music Studios in New York on November 17th and 18th, so I guess they did two of them mm. in 94. It gave Dylan his best sales in years, reaching wow. number 23 and going gold, while hitting number 10 in the UK. I'll tell you, Trey, everything unplugged for that little two-year span there. <laughs> everything went, went to gold. Yeah, man. And so I guess we're going to start off with John Brown. And uh, Sean notes that a version of the song is now available on the uh, Whitmark demos from 63. Yeah, way um, back. Bootleg Series Volume 9 and also was released under a pseudonym in 63, but was never given an official uh, Bob Dylan album release. It's an anti-war song written in October of 62. Way back. And tells a story about a mother who sends her son John Brown to war on some foreign land and he returns blinded and injured. Dang. Wow. So, Sounds like some heavy stuff. As uh, always, we're going to have the lyrics yeah. that we got to <laughs> on Dylan and uh, we'll weigh in after the song. Yeah, and due to the unfortunately oh, yeah. Dylan stuff always gets blocked. Hopefully, you know, he sold his rights. So hopefully that'll change over time here. Um, so music won't be in here, y'all, but there'll be a a link to Vimeo. That's exactly right. Um, Go check that so out. So you can see the full video if you want. But uh, let's get to it. Right, John Brown bringing it, man. Leave it to Dylan to have a song this freaking uh, great that, <laughs> you know, wasn't even ever officially released in, uh, you know, the time that he wrote it, man. That's wild. It just, what a story, Dad. Yeah, it's crazy. What, 12 verses? Ooh, yeah. Just, just, and you said it like halfway through you're just hanging on every word mm -hmm. it was alarming you stated it at first to hear his voice that nasal that nasal <laughs> he's like okay then at, by verse three you don't even know no you don't you're know just... who's singing you're just like what's going on you know it is the story you know she told him oh son you look so fine in verse three i'm glad you're son of mine you make me proud to know you hold the gun do what the captain says lots of metal medals you will get and we'll put them on the wall when you come home that's verse mm. two and this is how he ends it when we get a little... But she gets a letter telling her that her, she, she hadn't heard from him in 10 months. Yeah. They're writing letters back and forth. She gets a letter uh, 10 months later after she hadn't heard from him and saying, your, your son's coming home. So she goes down to the train station and she doesn't see him anyway at the very mm. end. She finally sees him and, and he's not in good shape. Dude, yeah. He's, he's held up by the uh, metal brace. His face is all shot up. His, uh, and she notes, while she couldn't even recognize his face um and she asks oh what happened this and that and then you kind of get it into the psyche of john brown himself yeah. in war talking about you know uh, i thought when i was there god what am i doing here i'm a trying to kill somebody or die trying but the thing that scared me so most good. was when my enemy came close and i saw his face looked just like mine and you know in this period dad we had uh one of my favorite dylan tracks masters of war yeah um you know dylan obviously wasn't shy even at such a young age no. you know younger than I was at this point to to write about such heavy topics man and um you, you know, know this is pre Vietnam being yeah. a huge oh. deal either you know we're kind of in That's between point. Yeah. in between Korea which would have ended in 53 and Nam which really kicked up in the mid 60s mm -hmm. but there was some stuff with, but he's just He's already knows, man, that it's just a matter of time. We're right back in it. And I, I think that's just always impressive about Dylan, man. He not only can write from his own perspective, but he mm. pretty much any perspective he yeah. can uh, like and, put himself in there. And, and make shoes. you believe it. Yeah, dude. It's uh, I was impressed. And like you said at the end, but as he turned to go, he called his mother close. Uh, and he dropped his medals down into her hand. It's almost less like, oh, yeah, I know you're going to be permanently disabled now. Yeah. Here's some medals. Here you go. And this Thanks. is what we wanted, you know. Type yeah, exactly. Of thing. No, what a fantastic song. That's going to move us to Dignity, which has an interesting story behind it. Uh, 
Sean says we was originally an outtake from the album Oh Mercy, which we have reviewed, but that's right. in 1989, a song Dylan had a lot of difficulty in the studio in getting right the right sound and feeling. I've got some more on that. The difficulties recording the song during those session, Oh Mercy sessions are described by Dylan in his autobiographical Chronicles Volume 1. As originally recorded with Dylan accompanied by Brian Stoltz and Willie Green, they mm-hmm. managed to complete a polished performance, but producer Daniel Lanois suggested something more ambition with, ambitious with a Cajun band. Interesting. Curious to see what Lanois had in mind, Dylan agreed to recut the song. The next evening, a session was held with Rockin' uh, Dopsy and his Cajun band, but the results were disastrous. The group experimented with different keys and tempos, but according to Dylan, everyone was frustrated with the results. Yeah, he still preferred the original version, recorded the previous day, but neither he nor Lan Wa considered it finished. Mm. They listened to every take of Dignity recorded with Dopsy and his band, and all of them were rejected. <laughs> Dylan said this, whatever promise Dan had seen in the song was beaten into a bloody mess. Where we had started from, we'd never gotten back to. A fishing expedition gone nowhere. <laughs> and no take did we ever turn back the clock. We just kept winding it. Mm. Every take, another ball of confusion. This song was set aside, never to be revisited, for the remainder of the sessions, and then this live version was recorded and was released as a single in April of 95. Now, I remember back from when we did these albums with Land Wall, him and Dylan eventually had a little bit of heat, and that's probably when this was... Uh, that's right, this yeah. This is probably when this quote <laughs> was taken from, so I'm excited to see what we got. Another epic tune right here, Dignity. Uh, we can start that, I guess, with the instrumentation, because I didn't touch on it much on John Brown, but... Uh, this song, like John Brown, you know, heavy on the organ. Yes. Organ here, and, um, you know, whereas John Brown was more kind of in that uh, country vein here, this was more a, a bit of a, an upbeat track, a strong focus on that rhythm section and the drumming, which I uh, thought was uh, pretty stellar. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, lyrics-wise, verse 1 and verse 2 are somewhat related. They're, they're sort of, like, playing off each other, but then really... You, you just have each verse is almost mm-hmm. its own individual story. No, you're right. And, just and four lines. And four lines, and you know everybody's searching for the dignity. Some of them talk about it in the last line. Some of them don't, but everybody's searching for that dignity. No, you're right. I'm searching, um, you know, high and low, searching in, in literature, doing this, doing that. Um, I, I like the blind man's even breaking out of a trance, puts both his hands in his pockets of chance, hoping to find one circumstance of dignity. I, I, you, you like it almost is framing dignity as like a, an, an essential being or like a person yeah. thing. Yeah, you um, feel like it is some sort of object itself. Then he went to the wedding of Mary Lou, <laughs> went down where the vault Vultures feed, chilly wind sharp as a razor blade, house on fire, debts unpaid, going to mm. stand at the window, window, going to ask the maid, have you seen Dignity? Even meeting up uh, old Prince Philip, man. I know, I thought that was an odd line in there, man. I thought that was an odd verse in there. <laughs> um, said he was abused by Dignity. So, you know, Dignity here, uh, taking people for a ride in a lot of these verses, yeah, exactly. so to speak, um, which is, uh, you know, just an interesting thing because obviously, you know, Dignity is a... It's described as like a, a positive trait, yes. you know, people have. It's, oh, well, Bob kind of turns that a little bit. <laughs> uh, you, you don't want to lose your dignity, man. Um, and, uh, you know, we, I like the, the very end. Uh, you know, it's dignity. i never been photographed. I went into the red, went into the black, into the valley of dry bone dreams. Um, I, sometimes I wonder what it's going to take to find dignity. So I, I find that unique as well. We didn't actually find dignity. At no, the we end didn't of the find track. it. It's just a I, search. I, I, I thought at the very end uh, maybe we would find it but hey man there, there's got to be that level of uh, mystique and intrigue you know when you're 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 tackling you know mr dylan here so you, you know and i think in typical bob fashion these people show up to an unplugged right he's got all these songs and he plays two songs at that point that had never been released anywhere Dude, they're probably yeah like, that's a, i'm sure the hardcore <laughs> fans might have heard them on the boot or something but they're probably like what <laughs> What is this, man? That's a Bob. I mean, even to this day, I know, you know, in some of his concerts, he'll like, be, if he plays something, even if it's popular, he'll kind of totally rework it and, yeah. and arrange it. And, you know, that's that's what you get when you're signing up for Bob, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, he beats to his own drum, of course. And, uh, man, just so impressive. But now it comes time for the winner of this battle, Dad. What do you got? John Brown or Dignity? I got John Brown. John Brown. Going. So powerful. I mean, Dignity's a really good song, mm-hmm. too. But John Brown, for me... 
is the clear winner. That's how good I think it is, not how bad I think they No, is. yeah, both both are stellar tunes, man. I, I appreciate these uh, kind of hidden... Oh, I do too. Hidden gems. Uh, not hidden, but uh, you know, well, underappreciated maybe is a better word uh, that pretty Sean, hidden still. Sean brings to us, man. I'm actually going to go with Dignity, which surprises me because after John Brown, uh, I, I was really enthralled with that yeah. story. I like the uh, instrumentation on Dignity just a little bit more. And, um, you know, as it continued to go along, I think that's one that uh, definitely is going to reward repeated listens. I agree. Uh, as, as most of Dylan's stuff does. But uh, let us know, y'all, below which of these you enjoyed more and uh, any other tunes from the Unplugged that uh, we should check yeah. out, man. Be sure to give some props to our guy, Sean, as well, for suggesting this. Always appreciate that. Uh, as always, I'd appreciate the research yep. and the backstory on this. And uh, if you like the video, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps us out. Hit that big red subscribe button. And if you'd like to have us uh, do a song battle for you, you can check out our Patreon page. Shout out to the patrons who help keep the channel going. But until then, y'all, thanks for watching. Happy listening. And we will see you.